Well, the Buffalo Buttes announcing a few re-signings today. This is uh, Wednesday, and we hear Kristen Lewicki will be back. I'm a Ruggiero, and joined today or tonight as we interview, as we record this by Kelsey Newman. Kelsey coming back for another year with the Buttes, and uh, first and foremost, thanks for your time, Kelsey. We appreciate you taking some time out to chat with us. No, thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So some pretty cool stuff going on. One, re-signing with the Buttes. Two, you're keeping very busy working with kids, and three, a really cool story about your connection to Vladdy Tretiak, which we'll touch on that as well. That was an awesome read. So first, let's talk about re-signing with the Buttes. It seems like a good, a good place to start. Nate reaches out to you and says, hey, we'd like to bring you back for another year to play for the Buttes. How exciting is that? I mean, I was definitely really excited. I didn't, wasn't too sure what would happen, especially like after they signed the first goalie, Carly. Um, it was, that's when it kind of gets real and you're like oh my god am I gonna get resigned? am I not so when I got the call from Nate uh and then a call from Pete to talk about next season and everything and found out that they were going to be resigning me it was definitely a huge weight off of my shoulders and definitely allowed me um more time to like just enjoy and train and enjoy being at the rink and not having that stress of oh my god am I gonna get picked up am I not gonna get picked up what's gonna happen so you spent most of your you spent a lot of your, most of your career behind some incredible goalies like us and Amanda Levier, and I think uh, what kind of things have you taken away from playing behind uh, goalies such as, as as them? So with like I mean Lev, I'll talk talk on Lev all day because she's my best friend. Um, but mixed definitely mixtape, mixtape, mixtape. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna be mixtape apparently, um, but no. Take, the takeaways I can take from like someone like Bree McLaughlin and Lev is just like the hard work. They're very hardworking goalies. And so that's something that like it pushes me as a goalie to work even harder. And that's nice. But also just like knowing that you can be a good goalie partner. Like they were all good goalie partners. And even with all their skill set, like it didn't go to their heads. Like just staying evil, even keel and being a good goalie partner. Last year saw some changes to the league, to the team. Um, and, uh, and for me, it's interesting that like Justin's been exposed for a lot longer. I admit I was the newbie last year. I, I tried to immerse myself and I, I feel a lot more comfortable around the league and the game this year, having been a part of it for a full season. But what do you feel differently going into this year? It's not, it's not like you were a rookie last year by any stretch. So what's different from last season to this season for you and your role and for the Buttes coming up in this uh, upcoming 2021 season? I think what's going to be different is we have a lot of unfinished business. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't a lot, obviously, last year, there wasn't a lot of re-signed players. There was only a few from the year before. And so we had a lot of new faces. And this year, we, we have a good amount of us that are re-signed. We were on the team last year. So those of us that were on the team last year, we know we have unfinished business. So we're putting in the work. We're doing our dry land stuff. We're getting those of us that can get on the ice. We're getting on the ice any way we can, whether it's um, I know I was talking with Meg Delay earlier today and she was like, oh my God, I've been shooting at a goalie clinic and it's a lot, but I'm getting a lot of reps in. Or for me, I went and I skated with a group of kids that I coached last week that are like junior players and stuff, but they need an extra goalie. And I was like, I'll go, I'll do it. So we, we know it's unfinished. And so we're making sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that this year we do finish business. So last year you got your shot. You started, you got to start finally. I think you're an incredibly underrated goalie. I've played against you multiple times in little charity things, and you absolutely were stonewalling us. Uh, not you. a great hockey player. But uh, anyways, um, you got your shot. You came in, and you absolutely shined. You looked, you looked uh, confident. You were really good at staying square to the shooter. You were controlling your rebounds. How did it feel to come in and get the opportunity and just and play as well as you did? Honestly, like, I think that first game, uh, not the one that I got injured in, but the, my first game in Connecticut, at Connecticut, where I got my first win, I actually like came off the ice, and I think it was I think it was Fuge that like I turned to, and I was like, I'm speechless right now. Like it's like the best feeling in the world. It's something that a I never thought would be a possibility because when I was growing up, like there wasn't an NWHL. So for me to first make it as a pro and then to get my first start, my first win, like the unforgettable moment and something that like, I didn't even know when I was younger that I was training for, but to see everything come full circle was definitely amazing. And getting the support that I have from 
even like from Brie or from Lev, like Lev, I texted her the morning when I, or not the morning, but like when I found out that I was starting the game, I texted Lev. And I was like, I'm starting like advice. Let's go. <laughs> What's up? And she was like, girl, you got this. Like, just go out there, do your thing. We're cheering for you. I'm supporting you. And I don't think that she had a game that day. So she actually watched and she, I got off the ice and I had a text and like, she was so excited for me. So those kind of things like just really mean the world. So we talked about the injury because I think you came on the podcast with us last season, the Monday after it happened or the week after it happened. And we said, you know, we kind of asked, hey, without tipping your hand, are you okay? We saw that you went to the bench and you were getting tended to. And then you explained to us what was happening on the bench because we couldn't see it. And it was as funny as you're making it out to be. So please, for those that may not have heard on the podcast, let us know, let the world know what happened when the trainer came over to you on the bench after you tweaked yourself and the lower body injury. So, yeah, so my first actual ever start, I get injured. Um, I'm pretty sure that it might have happened in the first period. I know, like, I felt something, like, in the first period, and then I stupidly tried to jump the boards, and I definitely did not get over the boards, but um, on a delayed penalty, and so that definitely did not help whatever was not feeling right, and then went in for the second period, and I made a save and I just like couldn't get back up. So I definitely knew something was wrong. So, and I had told Fuji before the period started in the locker room, I was like, listen, like if, if I go down, like be ready kind of thing. Um, Cause I fought through that kind of pain before. So I didn't really think that it would happen, but I went down and like finally get back to the bench. And I look at the trainer cause I had asked her between the first and second period, if I could put ice, ice on my injury. And she was like, no, like that's not good to do when you're playing. And I was like, Okay, so the first thing I did, I looked at her, I was like, can I have ice now? She was like, yeah. So she ran and she got ice and she came back with this like giant bag of ice, <laughs> which was hilarious because like, obviously she knew what the injury was, but she just went with whatever the, like she was given kind of thing. So I'm sitting there and I was like trying to put the ice down my pants without like having to like undo <laughs> all of my equipment. But it turned out that I had to undo my leg pad. So got my leg pads off the room in the little like in between that's between the two benches at North Town and then like kind of like shimmied my pants down and like put the ice on it and then so then I have to like get off the ice after the second period to go to the locker room and I'm like um yeah this is gonna be really awkward and everyone's gonna probably be like this looks weird kind of thing so got back there got undressed and then that was that we were watching from, the, you know, we have our little perch over the penalty boxes and we're like, yeah, Kelsey Newman looking like she's getting tended to by the trainers. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're trying to shove three cubic feet of ice into your hockey pants without any yeah. luck whatsoever. We didn't know that's what was going on, but that's an awesome, an awesome story and in the insight of what happens on the bench. You know, we, we think it's this big medical stuff. It's a bag of ice trying to squeeze down into the hockey pants. So anyways, but uh, so we mentioned the, the how you're keeping busy, and you said you're keeping busy to work hard and train, but what else are you doing with the kids? What have you been uh, working with? You work with a lot of goalies and young kids. What ages? You said third graders you work with as well. well so. Yeah, so at the beginning of quarantine, I was keeping busy with teaching. Teaching was definitely keeping me busy with my new set of third graders that I had that I met at the beginning of quarantine. So I got to meet them all over Zoom, and I was very lucky. I had an amazing group of third graders. And then since the school year has ended, I have been working with Maddie Norton. We have been doing kind of like dry land sessions with one of the local girls teams. So the Regals 10 U's and 8 U's reached out to us and they're like, hey, we want to do some type of dry land training just to keep the girls hockey related, keeping them fit, keeping them active kind of thing. And so we meet with them for an hour. And in the beginning when there was, when it was like, much more strict. It was four different groups, six girls or so in a group. And now we do two groups a week and um, whoever can make it, like they don't have to go to like a specific time. So like whoever can make it at six goes at six. If they make it at eight they, or at seven, they go at seven. Um, but yeah, so she does, she runs them through like an actual little like mini workout that is age appropriate. And then after 30 minutes of that, we split up. She takes the players and the defense and works on stick handling. I take the goalies and run them through some different drills that I did as a kid at camp. And um, as well as using some, uh, a new product that I got called Blaze Pods, which are little reaction, like, you know, like the reaction time, getting, getting out, getting back to the home light, getting out 
using it like a crease kind of thing. So doing a lot of fun stuff with them and that. Go ahead, sorry, my dog's barking. Carry Your on. dog's making yourself known. <coughs> so if you, yeah, the other, the other thing we would talk about, you said training when you were a kid and a story came out this past week of your work with Vlad Trecek, uh, known for his uh, appearance in the Miracle Run for the U.S. and, and oh, I admit my known for well, no, 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 no. But for for people like me, that would be our connection to because I wasn't around for the miracle, but I'm aware of it. And so for me, I I, I admit my my fandom is blind in me because my you know as being a USA hockey fan and that kind of thing. So so you had the opportunity to train under Chechak in some really neat circumstances. So give us some insight. I'm not asking you to hash out the whole story. People can find it and read the entire story, which was awesome. But give us some details about you being a, what, an eight-year-old, right? Maybe even too young to go to this camp. And, and here you were training under Vlad Trachek. Yeah, so my first camp, I was eight. I mean, I have a brother who's two years older, so he was going to camp. So my mom kind of called and was like, hey, uh, I have a daughter. She's a goalie. She's eight. And they're like, well, that's a little young for what we do here. And she was like, listen, she's a competitive gymnast. She's in the gym like six hours a day and then she goes to hockey or softball or karate like kid has energy she'll be I think she'll be okay um and so after learning that I was a competitive gymnast they were it was like okay well then we understand that she'll be able to handle the rigorous like schedule and everything so yeah I did my first camp as an eight-year-old and that one was up in Toronto and then after that, we spent every summer in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, because he also had a camp there at the International Hockey Schools, and spent every summer there until I was probably like 14 years old, I think. And it was just an amazing experience to be able to go to the same goalie camp every year with Kretiak and just learn from him every year. And you heard the same stories, but yet hearing the same stories, doing the same drills, like you still learn something new every time. And now that I'm a coach, like I try to, and I say it in the article, like my coaching style is based mostly on how I learned from him and wa watching him and him being one of my mentors, as well as my dad, because my dad also coached with him at these camps. So that's where a lot of like my coaching style comes from. And it's funny because I actually had a few of the parents who their kids have been doing these dry land sessions and I'm putting these kids through some of the tennis ball drills and hand eye drills that we did at Vladdy's camps in the summer. And the parents at first were like, why are they doing that? Why are they doing a somersault and getting up and trying to catch a ball? Like, what are you, why are they rolling around? What's happening? And then the article came out and one of the moms actually was like, I get it now. Now I understand why you're making them do that. Okay. I was like, yeah, you know, it's just, just like to do things. Like the Russians, apparently. If it was good <laughs> enough for you to do when you were eight, these eight-year-olds can do it now. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> well, and it's really, it comes down to, like, getting them to think outside the box, especially for females. Like, a lot of the times, the female hockey players, especially the younger ones, just are, like, so tuned in to, like, what they're being told. It's, they have to do whatever they're told. So you tell them that they can be in this box, and they – can only shoot if they're inside that box they will just stand there the box could be big enough for them to skate around in but they will just stand right where you tell them <laughs> so we have to get players and goalies on the, of the female side especially when they're little to start thinking outside the box so I tell that the kids know why they're doing it whether they tell their parents that they know why they're doing that that's on them I guess but no like oh I'm gonna somersault because no I'm not gonna somersault in a game or practice but I'm gonna be out of position I'm going to be on my back I'm going to be on my butt like I have to know how to get up kind of thing and uh, when they're doing it off the ice it's more for them to work on getting up quicker kind of thing because if they can get up quicker off the ice it's going to translate onto the ice so, uh, so is there anything you thought you learned you learned in that camp that um that still sticks you to, to this day whether something is said to you or taught you that still that you apply to your game these days? Don't be a lazy goalie. <laughs> That's, I, he didn't, I was fortunate. He never actually said those words to me. Um, but def he definitely would like say no lazy goalies or like skate up to a kid in like your group. So it'd be like groups of three or four, I think, in a group at a station. And whenever he would like skate over, you obviously wanted to be on your game and you didn't want to be called a lazy goalie. But if you were 
how it worked was you had a goalie in the net, a goalie on deck, and then two goalies at the side station. So if he went over to, to your station and you weren't on deck or you weren't in the net and you weren't doing the side station, he automatically would call you out on being a lazy goalie. So that's something that definitely I take to heart and I definitely don't ever want to be called a lazy goalie. So, and there's times where like, I have to even tell, tell myself, like when I'm super tired and I'm dogging it in a drill, I'm like, no, you're, you're going to finish strong because you can't, you can't be a lazy goalie. Is that good advice for you, Justin? Don't be a lazy goalie. <laughs> I'll, I, I, I note it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have one more question, and then if Justin has uh, anything else, you're an ambassador. You work with Lift the Mask, so give us some insight. I admit I don't know a ton about it. I followed at a, a bit of a distance. I see when you post things. So give me, give us the uh, rundown of what Lift the Mask is a proponent of, because I see you working hard with it, and it seems really cool. Yeah, so Lift the Mask is a mental health initiative for goalies, um, so sorry players, but basically it's a, a program where they donate up to about $100 to goalies who need mental health help that are reaching out and they're asking for help, which is like one of the biggest steps that you can take with mental health um, going on. So for me as an ambassador, I'm, I'm here to talk if anyone ever needs someone to talk to or they need advice about what someone's going through or th they themselves are going through. So it's a very near and dear subject for me just because I know I've dealt with my own mental health. I'm still figuring out how to tell my story in full um, and things like that. But I'm very thankful for Lift the Mask because the guys that I've met that are ambassadors in it and the different um, like Zoom calls that were, we were doing during quarantine and everything like that were very beneficial to me. And it, it helps because being goalies, we're always, we're always told like, oh, go stand in the net. Like no one ever really comes and talks to us. Uh, and Justin, you probably know how that feels. So like with being a goalie, like we're on our own little island. So Lift the Mask is there to remind goalies like, yeah, we might be in our own little island during a game or a practice, but at the end of the day, there's a bigger goalie community out there that wants to help you succeed and wants to know your story kind of thing. So That's awesome. Last, how, can, how can we connect with that? Sorry, Justin. How can people connect with Lift the Mask? Um, they can go on the website. I believe that it's liftthemask.com. I can send you guys the link, but a, a good way also is through social media. Um, we use the hashtag Lift the Mask. It's all ran through the Goalie Guild and Justin Goldman. So reaching out to Justin Goldman would be great. I can get you guys the com contact info also. I don't have it on the top of my head. I didn't mean to spring it on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I was just on a four-hour USA Hockey Zoom call. So that's why I don't have that at the top of my head. Uh, I think a good way to close this out would be uh, say you're a free agent and you're trying to pitch yourself to a, a GM or a team. Uh uh, what what would you what would you say to what would your sales pitch be to a team? What kind of player? What kind of goal are they getting uh, on the ice in the locker room and then, and things like that? You want this to be like super serious or, <laughs> or do you want like the McLevin aspect of it? I okay. vote I vote for the not oh. super serious version. I want the well, most serious, guys, I'm, nev I'm never that serious. Let's be real. Um, no, if I'm pitching myself to a team, the kind of goalie that they're getting is someone that's very relaxed during practice. Maybe sometimes people think too relaxed. Um, definitely uh, not taking myself too seriously, especially when I know I need to be more relaxed and let go. Uh, Personality-wise, they're getting someone that loves the game and really wants to be there for the fans and grow the game in every way, shape, and form and be a part of the community. And I'll work hard. I won't be a lazy goalie. No lazy goalie. I was going to say, how did you get through that whole thing without saying that? Because I feel like that's more serious. Oh, and I will go in my goalie equipment pretty much anywhere that they ask me to. Great Twitter content producer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we need some more of that this year. So. Known somersaulter, Kelsey Newman. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll do somersaults on the ice, I guess. I might be getting too old for that, though. I <laughs> I'm pretty sure, Justin, you mentioned the 11 day, and I don't know if you remember the shift that I came to with my daughter. And uh, it was, once again, pre-exposure to, to the Buttes and, and really expo a lot of exposure to women's hockey. And I was like, your team couldn't score. He's like, yeah, that's Kelsey Newman over there. And is that right, Justin? Was it Kelsey and that? 
Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, it's a true story. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went to watch Justin play like three or four shifts, Kels, and no goaltender that suited up looked anything like you. It like it it yeah. wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. Hey, but it, you know what? It was all for a good cause. I'm really sad that we don't have the 11 day power play right now because I feel like it would be coming up or might have already happened. Usually, usually right about now, mid July. So. Right yeah, I was, yeah. guys, I was really excited because this is like the first summer that I actually have off as a teacher because I worked at a refugee agency and it was like year round teaching. So the one year I went and I had like the 3 a.m. shift, yeah, I played it and then I went to work. So, so Justin, uh, she would have pwned you even harder this summer oh because God. she would have, you know, been rested and not needed to work the next morning. <laughs> but, but yeah, I was like so excited. I was like, oh my God, I don't care what shift I get because I don't have to go to work the next day. <laughs> Turns out nobody gets a shift, but the 11-day power play is still going on. Justin, you're still fundraising. but I still have my fundraising link. I don't know that anyone's donated to it anymore, but I, I still have it. I'm still trying. I'll have to repost it. <laughs> Do it. Cool. Thanks for your time, Kelsey. Yeah, of course. This Thank is you awesome. Guys. Look forward to working with you this upcoming season. Congrats on re-signing. Thank you. And again, if you guys ever want to 